So the purpose of, of this session and the purpose of the GlamWiki tool set in general is mass uploading to Wikimedia Commons. The idea has been around for quite a while. We've had many methods of achieving mass upload to Wikimedia Commons, uh, but as those of you who have known me or known GlamWiki for a couple of years, you will have probably heard me and others talking about this kind of thing for many years. We need a structured or a standardized way of pushing material from GLAMS and from other external data sets of, of multimedia to Wikimedia Commons that does not require personalized, roll your own bots and scripts and tools built by your personal uh, Wikimedia Commons admin friend. Uh, there's lots of those systems that exist that are generally built by Commons experts for specific archival donation. They will always be better at your specific needs because they are specifically designed. What we've done with the GlamWiki toolset over the last couple of years is to try and solve the question of if you do not have personal access to a Commons admin, uh, what do you do? So it's a generic solution to a very diverse problem of metadata. Pushing large numbers of JPEGs or other media formats to Wikimedia Commons is not di technically difficult. It's not about uploading files. It's about mapping metadata. That, regardless of the quality of the software or the amount of time that you invest in, in technology, will never solve the great challenge of uploading to Wikimedia Commons or any kind of database work that is the intellectual difficulty of connecting your metadata from the originating institution to the metadata standards and templates of Wikimedia Commons. So the great benefit or the great uh, value of the GlamWiki toolset is in that mapping. Um, the process itself is somewhat obscure because of that. There's no one-click button. What you have to do is start with an XML export. So we're already setting the bar somewhat high in terms of technological competency. Uh, we don't just say, tell me what your URL of your website is and press go. No, you have to be able to export from your database online, from your CLAM or elsewhere, an XML uh, spreadsheet of, of your metadata in some structured way. All of the file names, all of the URLs to where the high resolu highest resolution uh, JPEG or media file exists online, not offline. It has to be online. Uh, the, all the other metadata that you might want to put in Wikimedia Commons, author, year, location, categories, all that kind of material. It does not matter what the metadata file uh, record types are in your XML, as long as you know what they mean. Because then you will ask for your website to be cleared for connecting to Wikimedia Commons, whitelisted. Then you will upload your metadata file. Then you will enter the template that you are going to point to. Well, that's actually... Huh. <laughs> so you upload your metadata file. You tell it what URL, what website you are pointing to out there in, in internet land. And then you choose a Wikimedia Commons template that you will be using. There are several. They're all different. They're none of them standardized. Art photo is quite common or photograph, template photograph, or template art photo, quite common. Art photo, for example, being here is an object, here is my photo of the object, 
and there are different kinds of metadata to, to each object. The object is a sculpture, it's Greek, it's uh, from 600 BC, it's from Athens. My photo is from 2012, it's from the museum. So the metadata is different and you can, you can achieve that kind of differentiation. Then you go to the mapping stage. I'm, I'm running through quickly the, the standard format, but... Can I just interrupt? Yes, certainly. Uh, what you're showing now, uh, I, I know the tool set a bit. Mm -hmm. This is actually the easy part. Yes. <laughs> what, what took me most time to grasp is how to log on, how to get permission to use the tool, mm -hmm. how to get per, uh, access to the data environment of comments, to the, uh, <coughs> the labs environment of uh, foundation, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It took me actually two workshops to figure that out. <laughs> and once I got that, this, this was relatively easy. Could you say something about the first steps you need to... Certainly. Um, I'll go back to the documentation page. Uh, so here in, um, if you go to commons, glam wiki underscore toolset, then these links here will, will give you the specific link. But the point of that procedure is unfortunately cumbersome, and I apologize for it. Uh, but it is both a request of the Commons community, uh, a fear of mass upload by new users without testing. Um, here's a lot of stuff with no metadata. What do we do? So the idea is to first go to Commons Beta, get permission on Commons Beta from the links, from the description here. So you have to say, hi, my username is this on, on, the, on the page. I want to have access to this tool as a user right for your account on Beta. Someone will come along and say, sure, okay. You have to wait 48 hours. That makes it much less fun in a workshop setting. Uh, you can't just go. But we have a, a test data set we can, we can demonstrate for, um, for someone who already has that account, that um, user right. And there are several people here who have the ability to help you get that kind of user right for your own user account. But yes, you need to have a Wikimedia login on Commons. You need to make a username. And you need to have a login for beta, which is not single user login. Same user account, but it doesn't transfer. You have to create the password again. Um, <clears throat> do you need a long history in the comments? Mm -hmm. And thinking of plans, we no. tend to do an upload and not, not much more. No, you, you don't. That's, the, uh, that's one of the reasons why this permission is, you have to request it. It's not automatic because you don't have to have a long history in comments. And that's why we use the beta system. The idea is, you do a test on beta, you play with it, you put your metadata, you put your images, you see what it looks like. You, c you might have 50,000 images, just upload five to play with. And when, you have, when you're happy, then you go to uh, Wikimedia Commons itself, to the bureaucrat's notice board, say, hi, here's my example, this is what it will look like, can I have the same permission on Commons Real? Because I will do that upload. And they may say, no, you've made a mistake, you don't understand. Or they'll say, yeah, sure, that looks good, and, and give you the right. It's a cumbersome process, uh, but it's designed, rightly or wrongly, it's designed to stop someone coming along saying, because it's an integrated process, it doesn't require expertise beyond XML. It's designed to stop someone coming along saying, I found lots of photographs on Flickr. Here they are. Uh, sorry, but the test uh, environment sometimes doesn't work. It's so a test it environment. For you. And I know uh, people from the museum, Naturalis, who want to do uploads themselves in the end. But I don't think they will ever do much more on common, so it's just uploads sometimes. And it will be hard for moderators perhaps to judge 
unknown people? The, the, um, the, once you have the permission on the user right on beta or on commons, it is associated with your user account. Done. Uh, you can always ask, ask a friend to, to look at it. But that's the, the, that's the idea, that you don't have to have previous or follow-up experience with Wikimedia Commons to do this, in theory. You do a test, you demonstrate what it looks like on beta. Beta does not always work perfectly because it is beta, it's not production. Not all of the templates work in the same way. But at least there's a method for demonstrating what you're trying to do and then get some help. Not just, here's my XML, can someone else do it, please? No, you can, you can do it yourself. Zika. Um, maybe I misunderstood. Commons beta is a commons test site it's or a a dummy. Yeah. It is not really beta like in development, but a test site. Exactly. It's like your labs for labs for commons. For your beta uploads? It's a testing environment. Yes. It's not beta software. Yes, and the user account, uh, I have a commons, I, 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 a Wikipedia account, commons account. Would it be the same I can use on no. beta? Is it beta yeah. is not single user login. It's not. Okay. So you can you you have to make a new user account for. But you would advise to use the same. The same name. Name because then other people can see. Oh, it's the same person and yeah. he did good things on beta. So we think exactly. he will do it right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, because it is a test environment, beta is not connected through the single user login system. That is, when you log into Wikipedia and then you click on a link to Commons, you're already logged in on Commons. For example, beta is independent. So yes, another layer of of uh, before you start complexity is you have to create a user account on beta. Uh, um, David, did you have a, a okay? The as as I said, the we'll demonstrate with a, a sample data set in a second. Um, the work of the Glamarkey toolset, as Jesse or others who have used this tool will, will tell you, the vast majority of your time involved in using this tool to push to Wikimedia Commons is not in the actual pushing to Wikimedia Commons. It's getting your paperwork in order to start with. Uh, one, because Commons is complicated and the tool has these quirky methods of getting permission. Um, for which I apologize, uh, but two, because the intellectual complexity of doing a mass upload is in the metadata mapping. So it's take, getting your metadata extracted from your GLAM, your own GLAM or the institution that you're working with, in a format that lets you play with it, that you are comfortable with, that's the hard part. Then you simply you, you upload to your XML and connect the metadata records. Okay, in my metadata, in my XML, it says year. And the Wikimedia Commons template, that same field is called date. Put those together. Author to this piece. And you fill in as many pieces as you can of the template that you want to use. Sometimes you will discover that your metadata doesn't, is missing something or is doesn't quite match, so you have to go back, re-extract, or use an XML text editing software to add in more information, like a category or a name or, or something, re-upload, test again. That procedure can take some time. The larger your data set, the more um, uh, heterogeneous it is, the less able you are to make generalized statements or generalized categories, for example. But that's going to be the same regardless of the upload system you use. Uh, so uh, finding the metadata wrangling, metadata matching process tedious or difficult is not a function of the Glamarkey toolset. That's a function of connecting one kind of metadata to another kind of record. There is presumably a standard format that Europeana accepts metadata into. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, would it be possible to create a, a standard bridge from that standard Europeana format yep. and say to people, if you can produce your metadata in the format you give Europeana, 
then I would just download from this library of a mapping thing and, and use that. The, um, so our answer is yes. Uh, Europeana, for example, uses EDM, the Europeana Data Model. Uh, and that's a standard format for anything coming into Europeana. Obviously, you're not necessarily going to be using this tool for things that are in Europeana, but it's common for Europe. And one of the things that we were hoping to do with a grant to continue development of the Glamaki toolset was a preset example mapping for the Europeana data model. So you could say, my data is coming from, a, from Europeana and just click that button and it will do it for you. It, will, it knows what those fields mean. Uh, so that was going to be an automated version of exactly what you said. And we can do, we can certainly write documentation for that, but it won't be automated, unfortunately. That grant didn't happen for political reasons that you can read about on a mailing list. I think the best thing we could do is probably to, um, I can, uh, we could share a couple of default mappings inside the tool. Mm -hmm. But um, applying a default mapping blindly is always a little bit risky. Um, yeah, yeah. Some of the elements that you still need to do that are not part of the tool are still, uh, still exist. Uh, so anyone who uses Wikimedia Commons will be familiar with partnership templates. Uh, the, this, this image was uploaded as part of a relationship between Wikimedia and blah, blah, blah. You still need to create that template. That doesn't happen automatically within the Glamaki toolset because this is generic for any kind of mass upload. It might not be a partnership. So you still need to create the partnership template. You still need to understand Wikimedia Commons categories because they do not necessarily match the categorization or the tagging system used by the GLAM. Sometimes they, they connect, sometimes they do not. So you need to be aware of that. Mostly they don't. Yeah, and especially if you're, uh, let's say that you're uploading a data set from a uh, Lithuanian museum. Um, if you want to do where, so they, in all likelihood, all of their metadata is in Lithuanian, Lithuanian. but Wikimedia Commons only accepts categories in English. That means that there is no way to directly map a, a Lithuanian museum's categorization of the photograph motif to a commons category. You would have to do some data wrangling beforehand, uh, basically create a translation file from, from one of the uh, languages to the other. Some of these things could become more sophisticated at some point if you could, uh, instead, of, instead of, uh, instead of uh, assigning a Wikimedia Commons category that is text, it would be pretty nifty if you could just add in a Wikidata entity. Um, That's why we're so excited that about the uh, structured data program yeah. at the Community Foundation and Wikidata. Because yeah. that would take care of the multilinguality in a way. Uh, once you've defined the entity church, then you know what it's called in, in, in a number of languages. Obviously, if, if you're coming from the Lithuanian Museum and your data set says, uh, has a ca tag, uh, the National Church. This is a photograph of the National Church. That makes sense within the context of the Lithuanian Museum. But you put that on Wikimedia Commons, which National Church? So you need to translate your tags both linguistically and, and intellectually. So some of the elements that Wikimedia Commons uses for any kind of upload the Glamour toolset can't help you with because they, they are commons specific. Partnership templates, categories, uh, institution templates or artist templates. Uh, could, you, uh, could you show us a, a demonstration? A simple example for XML file. Yes. David is working on one that um, is. I can switch over. So I will do that. Uh, if you, should I switch over to the mm -hmm. practical part? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I realize that this is theoretical, um, so we will try and, but metadata usually is, so we'll try and demonstrate. So basically this, uh, this process is, if you, if you work together with some GLAM institutions and you know, um, all these pictures are already uploaded on, this, um, on, on their server, yeah. on, uh, on any server, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's just to get the connection between comments and 
Entonces, uh, they really uploaded, uh, they really uploaded them to Commons? Yeah. Uh, OK. Uh, some institutions so have done it for themselves. Drop. Sorry? This is, a, uh, this is a kind of cake to drop them. Yeah, it, it, once you have it, once you have pressed go, yeah. it's it, like, it just goes. Yeah. And yeah, you can, and that's why you have to have the files online. Yeah. Because you can turn your computer off. Okay. And it continues because Commons and the okay. tool is and connecting the to the website. And you are the uploader. You've just pressed go. Yeah. And it connects the three. Okay. Uh, it does not work for offline upload okay. for your hard drive which then requires your computer and your network connection to be, to be maintained. Okay. This, that's why we have that whitelisting, the URL domain whitelisting process. So the tool connects Wikimedia Commons to the tool to the domain. Okay. And we have approved that domain. <laughs> okay. And then it runs by itself. Um, but we do have examples of GLAMs that have used it by themselves for their own material. So the essay from the National Sound and Vision Archive of, of the Netherlands. They uploaded hundreds of videos of birds and categorized them with uh, the Latin name of the bird and the descriptions in English and Dutch for the description fields. And we have also had Wikimedians uploading from GLAM and non-GLAM archives without the, with or without the interest or knowledge of that GLAM. So you don't have to it, because it's Wikimedia Commons, this tool can be used by anyone for any purpose. We hope it's used by GLAMs for GLAMs in Europe, because we're Europeana. But it can be used by anyone else.